The Complete Guide to Perfect Effects video training covers On1 software version 9 and 9.5. Now that On1 Photo has updated to version 10.5, I thought I would share a quick video that demonstrates some of the changes between the two versions. The first thing you'll notice is that the interface is different. It's a little bit darker. Some of the basic look is updated, uh, maybe some colors and some fonts and some, some, some of the icons are changed as well. I'll go over some of just the general things to start off. In previous versions, the module selector was at the top. In 10 and 10.5, they have been moved all the way to the right. So we have browse, enhance, effects, portrait, layers, and resize. And on the opposite side of the screen, all of the tools have been moved to the left as well. They used to sit here at the top, just to the right of the presets and the filters panel. And in the presets and filters panel, we no longer have a favorites tab. It's still there though, you just have to find it inside of the presets panel. If you click on presets and favorites, then you'll find all of your favorites. In the filter stack on the right, once you open an image, you'd no longer automatically have an empty filter. You can start out by either adding a filter using this button, or you can click on one of the filters over on the left. I'll start out by adding a filter. Click the Add Filter button, and you get a drop down asking you which category you'd like to apply. I'll start with a color enhancer. When I click on the color enhancer, the filter layer pops up, and it gives me all of the options inside of that filter layer. In the previous version, in version 9 and 9.5, there was a separate filter options panel below the filter stack. In version 10 and 10.5, the filter options and the layer itself have been combined. It doesn't really change the functionality, it just changes where you go to actually make the edits to your image. If I want to add another filter to this, I click Add Filter, and again, I can either select from these options on the right, or I can go to the left and choose a new filter. Again, all of my filter options are within that actual filter layer. If I wanted to add a blending option to this, I would click this gear icon and then set my blending mode, the range, or the protect settings. All of these are also included in version 9. They're just in a little bit of a different location in 10. If I wanted to hide this, I just click that gear icon once again. I can also add a mask to this by clicking on that little plus icon to the right of that check mark where the filter is showing. And then I would select a tool, I have the brush tool active, and I would just start masking. It's obviously just a quick representation. I'm going to go ahead and undo that. I can toggle the visibility of each filter by clicking on the name, or I can rearrange them by clicking and dragging using those little bars on the right. The checkbox to the left of the mask will reveal or hide each layer. I can also change the opacity of each layer within the layer itself. And at the top, I can set the master opacity of the entire filter stack. Both of those opacity settings are included in version 9, they're just in different locations in 10. One thing that is newly added to version 10 and 10.5 is a master mask. This will mask an entire filter stack, so all of your filters would be masked, as opposed to having to mask each layer individually. To add a mask, just click on the mask, select your masking tool of choice, and then just start brushing away. I'll go ahead and reset that. To hide that mask, just click on that mask icon once again. And next I'd like to show you the new features added to the Perfect Brush. Brush is active. I'm going to click on that Perfect Brush icon at the top, and I can access the additional brush features by clicking on this gear on the right. This is where the additional settings are located as well. But brand new to 10.5 is the color threshold and the transition settings. The color threshold will determine how much of the color below the cursor is actually going to be removed. A setting of zero means everything immediately below the cursor, that little tiny minus sign is going to be removed. Whereas a setting of 100 is going to expand those colors. I'll show you a quick example. I'll set this to zero. I'm going to increase my brush size using the right bracket key, and I'm going to paint over the tulip to bring back some of that color. So this is what it looks like when you use a setting of zero. I'm going to undo that, and just to go to the extreme, let's go up to 100. 
you can see that with a setting of 100, it's finding a lot more of the color below that cursor. And it's kind of leaking out to the sides as well, even to some of those greens. Notice that the minus sign is never actually going over the tulip, so the green that's showing is just because the color threshold is set very high, so many, many more of those colors below the cursor are being selected. I tend to stick to a pretty low setting. Around 10% is a good place to start. The transition setting will determine how pixelated the edge of your mask is. At zero, it's going to be very jagged and a lot of pixels are going to show, whereas at 100, it's going to be a much more softer transition. Another small change that was added is the ability to double click a setting and reset it. So if I had some of these all set to different things and I decided that I wanted them to go back to zero, all I need to do is double click over the name of the setting and it will reset it down to zero. A few changes have also been made to the presets section. I'll go ahead and click on the presets to show you what I'm talking about. You can change some of the admin features behind some of the presets. In the past, some of these were stuck and you couldn't really do anything about them. Now you can actually edit them yourself. If I click on one, I'm able to actually right click and do a lot of different things. I can edit the preset. And I can actually change the name of it if I wanted to or change the category. I could even delete this if I wanted to. Or if I made my own version of it, I could update it to reflect my new settings. And last but not least, you're still able to search for presets. The bar has just been moved to the bottom. Click and type to search for a preset. And you're also able to do this in the filters as well. They're independent of each other, so you'll have to make sure that you are inside of the proper panel in order to search for the filter or the preset that you're looking for. So those are the highlights of the changes in On One Effects 10.5.